How do you determine if something is truly good or bad? How do you know if something is morally right or wrong? You read through the letter of Isaiah, the scroll, and you get to chapter 5, you get to verse 8, and you find a people who have ignored God. And they've moved from ignoring God to forgetting God. And they move from forgetting God to mocking God. And whenever you're mocking something, you're intending to replace that thing. You're intending to bring that thing down and set up a different standard. You're trying to show why this person or thing that you're mocking is wrong. And so that implies that you have something you want to replace it with. What do those who ignore and forget and mock God want to replace him with? Well, they want to replace him with their own standard. They have their own version of right and wrong that they want all of society and everyone to accept and validate. Hmm. Sounds like a little bit of what we're living in these days. If you go down to verse 18 of chapter 5, he says this, Woe to those who drag iniquity with the cords of falsehood and sin as with cart ropes. Who These people say, let him make speed, let him hasten to his work that we may see it. And let the purpose of the Holy One of Israel draw near and come to pass that we may know it. So here we see the mockery of God on display after they've chosen to live their lives without him and forget him as best they can and ignore his law and his word as, as good as they know how. They're not content to stay there, though. Sin always has to progress. It always has to build. It's The way of sin is downhill. It continues to progress. You can't just stay in that state. And so what do they do? Where do they go after they mock God, verse 20, woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who substitute darkness for light and light for darkness, who substitute bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. What they're doing is they're taking the moral order and they're flipping it on its head. Why would you want to do that? That's what rebels do. Mankind, at our core, we are rebels. I will not submit. I will not do what my Creator has told me. I will do it my way. I will do things the way I want. And somehow believe that I won't suffer the consequences for it. They will take the moral order of that which God has called good, and they will flip that over and call that which God calls good, he will call bad. We're right now in the beginning of a uh, time of the calendar year where people are very uh, proud of a particular way of living. And they want everyone else to validate and affirm that. And we've noticed through the years as that has gained momentum and has taken over more and more of society. There is a flipping of the moral order on its head. And now to condemn that type of celebration is considered morally wrong. Interesting inversion. And why is this the case? Because this is demonic. This is the nature of the world in which the devil rules over. He wants to take what God says and flip it over. And watch the brutality, anger, and violence that will come as a result. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who substitute darkness for light. They claim they are trying to um, teach and enlighten people. They're trying to show people what love really looks like. But you can't outlove God. God is love. And when God speaks, he proclaims that which it is. And what it looks like is contained in his word. We don't just get to set up our own definitions. And when we do, things go to pot. Things go downhill rapidly when we set up our own versions and our own rules and laws. We substitute light for darkness. Now, what happens when you do that? You tell a bunch of people in a room that's completely black that the lights are on. Well, how are they going to live? They're going to stumble around. They're not going to know what's truly right and wrong until a loud enough group of people yells at them and tells them what to do. This is arbitrary living. See, I started by saying, you know, how do I know that which is truly right or wrong? Well, I have a divine standard from a individual, from a being that is outside of this world 
who brings law, brings truth and light, not someone from within the system. What we have is truth that is not subject to the whims of a society or a opinion poll. Instead, what we have is divine light shined into darkness. That's a standard that won't move or change, regardless of the era or time or country that it's in. It stays the same all the time. That which is right doesn't move. That which is wrong doesn't change. That's not what happens when you ignore God and forget God and mock him and then move to replace him. Once you've done that, now it's just what? Whoever might makes right. Whoever has the most momentum behind their opinion wins. You want to live in that world? A warlord type of world? Well, that's the world that we want to create. That's a world that uh, is a small replica of hell. Hell is the inversion, the full inversion of all things that God says is right. People who want their own way will have it. Woe, woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who substitute bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. It's not my job to amend and change and alter the message or the word of God and what it is that God says is right or wrong. My job is to open it, to be taught from it, to learn what God would, would say, and then to live that out, to respond to it, to believe it and respond to it, not alter it. And man, there's so much desire to alter his words. There's so much of a desire in the background, in the back of most of our minds to say something like, did God really say that? Is that really what he proclaimed? Or is there another way to understand this? Is it a nuanced argument or something along those lines? God's word is, for the most part, pretty clear and pretty easy to understand. Our problem isn't that we understand it or that we fail to understand it. Our problem most of the time is that we lack the will to actually do it. And there's the prayer request. Lord, help me move within my own heart to want to do your will, to be courageous enough to walk in your truth, to proclaim it as well, to not be silenced by the mob, but to speak what the divine word has to say rather than living for the passing pleasures of sin. I hope uh, the word of God you find to be sufficient for all you need for life and godliness. Thank you for joining me.